If you know the truth and have the truth and love the truth, you got an obligation to share the truth. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. But we pray you be glorified, exalted, magnified. Pray for utterance and clarity for me that utterance may be given unto me. Lord, that I speak as the oracles of God and ministers of the ability that you give that you would be glorified. God, help us to minister in your ability, in your grace, by your spirit, your wisdom, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Most of this campus is heading straight to hell fire. The Bible says, he that commits sin is of the devil. If you're committing sin, you're a child of the devil. Isn't that right, young man? Tell me a story. Huh? Tell me a story. Right? Are you a virgin? Sure. You're, you're a Christian. Yep. You're not a Christian. Well, if you're not a Christian, you're heading to hell. Well, because you're selfish. The reason you're, like, you're not like me is because you're selfish. Why am I selfish? Because you're a sinner. You're not a Christian. How can you talk about Everything you do is selfish. Well, you're, you don't agree with me. The only thing that you you believe the Bible's the Word of God? What you are saying is that only Christians are right. That's right. Everybody that's not a Christian is wrong. Belief is not selfish. Uh, no, it's not selfish. Why not? Uh, because if you're a Christian, you love God. Why is the belief that only one group of on earth can be right, not selfish. Yeah, because there's only one right way. How do you know that? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. How do you the Bible know? has no errors and con or contradictions. How can you know? And how can you claim Because you know I've been studying it for years. The Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other. For there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is no other. There's no other. There's no other. There's no other gods. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. There is no other. That's right. I grew up in a home where we never really went to church every once in a while. My parents divorced when I was young. And when I got out of high school, Spirit of God began dealing with my heart. I began thinking about dying and thinking about eternity. And I met a guy that was a Christian and he, he told me about the Lord and I perhaps may have had a genuine conversion at that time, but I was never really taught genuine repentance and denying yourself and taking up your cross. I really had, it was all my responsibility and my fault, of course, but I didn't have any really solid teaching or any example. Uh, somebody had given me a tape about a, by a minister, and that tape began to expose all the bitterness and unforgiveness and the chip I had on my shoulder and all the grudges I'd been holding all my life. And, you know, I humbled myself and repented, and it was like I was carrying a load of cement from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, as if God took a big sledgehammer and just cracked all that off me. And all that fell off me. Well, God was gracious to me. One of my brothers, he actually preached to me the message that John the Baptist preached, the message that the disciples preached, which is repent. And, and you know, I, I, to my shame, I had broken all of God's commandments and I was miserable and undone. I was a wretched. And I cried out to God for mercy, and, and He surely showed it to me. And I turned from my sins, and I became a new creature in Christ. Behold, all things pass away, and behold, all things become new. And that's precisely what God did for me. So I'm grateful that my brother had the courage to, to tell me that, that I needed to repent. You know, before that, I, I only had religion. I didn't have a relationship with Christ. I was brought up Catholic. You, you don't have a relationship with Christ. You just have traditions and customs. And, and the Bible really became real to me when, when I sought God for mercy. And he, and he surely gave it to me. And He forgave me and threw all my sins into the sea of forgetfulness. And, and He remembers them no more. And then 
it was just such a love for his word and for prayer meetings and and just to be around other believers and God did that for me he surrounded me with people that were on fire for the Lord and were seeking his kingdom the pastor's son had introduced me to brother Mike at the time and we just we just started becoming friends. I'd go to the college and career ministry and he'd be there. So we met at church is where we met. The Bible said in Psalm 34, 8, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See, I had tasted the goodness of God. It's like I lost my appetite for the world and sin. And I just wanted to seek the Lord and pray and read my Bible and serve God. Love is not tolerance. Love is not tolerance? No, love is not tolerance. If I love, if I love black people, I don't tolerate the KKK. If I love Jewish people, I don't tolerate Nazis. If I love children, I don't tolerate pedophiles. If I love God, I don't tolerate sin. Real love is intolerant. The Bible said, you that love the Lord hate evil. The Bible said Jesus loved righteousness and hated iniquity. The Bible said these six things does the Lord hate. Do you believe the world is 6,000 years old or something? Of course I believe the world is 6,000 years old. Why? Uh, did you learn from your parents and then this? No, my parents weren't Christians. They were heathens like you are. Well, yeah. yeah, you're a heathen. You don't, hey, 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 watch your language. You cuss like a gangster rapper, young lady. Have you been listening to gangster rap? Yes. Hey, guys, strike this girl off your dating list. Girls like this are out to seduce you men and steal your virginity. <clears throat> now, you guys have got to be three pot smokers. Long as your hair is, long as your hair is, you've got to be pot smokers. <clears throat> now, just because a guy has long hair, it does not necessarily make him a pot smoker. Just because, just because a guy has long hair does not necessarily mean that he listens to rock and roll. Just because a guy has long hair doesn't necessarily mean he's a homosexual. But there's a pretty good chance. Huh? Yeah, I read the Bible. I, I obey the Bible. Of course I do. Do you know? Uh, well, uh, love, real love rebukes. You know the word rebuke? Jesus said, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. That's why I'm out here rebuking sinners. That's why I'm out here rebuking sin. Because I love them. Hell is full of people that Jesus loved. Hell is full of people that Jesus, hey, stop the judging. Stop judging me. Well, yeah, but I'm allowed to judge. I, I am allowed to judge, though. Yeah, I can judge because I'm righteous. No, Tupac said only God can judge, and Tupac is in hell. Where did Tupac get that from? It's in the Bible. No, no, it's not in the Bible. Jesus said, judge righteous judgment. Well, I kept reading my Bible and I kept reading all these verses that say things like, He that commits sin is of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. Well, I, you know, I wasn't hearing any of that in the churches that I went to and any of the preaching that I was hearing. And I, I figured, well, these guys must know more than I know. I must be misunderstanding this. And I, you know, I'd read people like Finney that would, you know, reinforce what I was seeing in the Bible. Actually, they helped me to see what was in the Bible. Well, I had to come to a decision here. Either the Bible's right and these guys are wrong, or these guys are right and the Bible's wrong. And so thankfully I made the right decision and I went with what the Bible says and I rejected uh, the false teaching that I was hearing. Titus 2, 11 and 12 says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world and 
Romans 6, 14 says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but under grace. I humble myself, and God saved me by the grace of God that gave me victory over sin and power over sin to live a, a holy, victorious life, to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. And so, and, and God spoke to my heart. I don't mean I heard his voice audibly, but he spoke to my heart three things. He says, number one, anybody that says that they can't live above sin is saying their sin is bigger than what Jesus did on the cross. Number two, they don't really believe that God meant what he said. When he said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord, which boils down to calling God a liar. Number three, he said, you sin because you want to sin. You sin because you like sin. And I thought, well, no, Lord, I don't, I don't love sin. I love you. I, I don't want to sin. I hate sin. And uh, sin is breaking God's commandments. He brought to my remembrance. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And he brought to my remembrance Proverbs 8, 13. It says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And if you, if you feared God, you'd hate sin. If you'd hated sin, you wouldn't want to sin. You would not sin. And, of course, Proverbs 1, 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Talking about knowing God. And then Proverbs 16, 6 says, By mercy and truth iniquities purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Proverbs 14, 27 says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Proverbs 3, 7 says, Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And... So I always try to emphasize to people, you know, I didn't believe I was going to go to hell for my sin. So I didn't really fear God. So I couldn't come to know God. I didn't hate my sin and I didn't depart from my sin. And Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So if the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowing God, then the beginning of the fear of the Lord is to understand that if you're in sin, you're going to go to hell for your sin and that God is perfectly just in sending you to hell for your sin and you deserve to go to hell for your sin. And, you know, if a person can't come to terms with that, then they're not ready to be saved. Jude 22 and 23 says, Some have compassion, making a difference, and others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Most students on this campus are having premarital sex. You don't love God. Anybody that's a sinner hates God. Anybody that commits sin hates God. Anybody that's a masturbator hates God. Anybody that watches porn hates God. I want you sinners to know Jesus told people he died for. He said, you serpents. You generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Now, you're a cigarette, you're a cigarette sucking sinner. I'm going to dedicate my smoking song to you. If you are smoking tobacco or pot, whether smoking a little or smoking a lot, I have a strong warning to you I must tell if you're smoking at all you'll be smoking in hell you'll be lit every morning you'll be fried every day your yellow stained fingers will be melting away you'll have a headache forever and your nerves won't be well because nobody gets high in that low place called hell so if you are smoking because you think that it's cool, let me remind you that smoking is the mark of a fool. So if you're cool while you're living, but you die in your sin, in that low place you're going, you'll never be cool again. In that low place you're going, you'll never be cool again. Why are you treating your body like an ashtray? I'm not treating my body like an ashtray. I'm sucking in poison as long as you're sucking it in and spewing it out. No, I'm spewing out the truth. There's a smoking ban on 
Bible said your body's the temple of God. If you defile the temple of God, God will destroy you. You smoke because you're selfish and you don't love your neighbor. I'm actually a you don't love your neighbor. Well, there I am in Miami saying I love God, saying I love my neighbor, saying I believe the Bible. And all these people around me dying and on their way to hell. And I'd felt for a long time I was called to preach. And I'd preach, I was preaching in jails. In fact, years ago, back probably around 1995, I was in a, I was in a Pentecostal service. And a minister called me out and uh, spoke over me and said, I, he said that I was called to preach and I said I was going to go forward preaching into the streets. And everybody around me was all excited about that and thought that was great. And I kind of thought to myself that really wasn't what I had in mind. <laughs> anyway, there I am in Miami saying I love God, saying I love my neighbor, saying I believe the Bible. And everybody around me is just deceived as I was and on their way to hell. And God dealt with my heart. You're called to preach. What are you going to do about it? And so I guess I was kind of slow, kind of dense. It took me a while to figure out that the churches that I went to, they probably weren't going to be interested in any of the preaching that they figured I'd try to do in those churches. That, uh, you know, they didn't want to repent of their sin and live holy and obey God and deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. So in July, July the 3rd, 2003, me and a friend of mine, we ventured out uh, on a, the campus of FIU where I graduated from. And we went out there and open air preached for the first time to uh, the birds, the squirrels, the tumbleweeds, and maybe 10 people passing by. Well, we went, we actually went to meet Brother Jed and Sister Cindy and Sister Pat. They were at the University of South Florida in Tampa, Florida, and that's when we started campus, well, I started campus preaching. However, before that, we would do evangelism at South Beach in Miami, Florida. Well, it, in Miami, Florida, they, they used to go out and witness, and we used, to, we used to do witnessing, and then preaching was first done at South Beach in Miami, Florida. There was always things going on there. We could go to Coconut Grove, or we could go out to to downtown Miami. But the difference between a marriage and a wedding. A marriage is the real no, no, shit. No, no. A wedding is just because you got four days doing it. Hey, hey. 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 She's a whore. She's a pink girl. You're going around sleeping with girls that you're not married. Are you saying my girlfriend's got a whore? I said if she's sleeping with you, then she's a whore. Because a whore sleeps hey, with people you that she's not married to. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, come on, sleep with a whore. A whore will sleep with men that Bro, she is not choice. married to. Bro, hey, come on, girl. Bro, girl choice. Sleep with girls Bro, that she is not married to. And, and you're drinking beer too. I am drinking beer. And the Bible says drunkards will not inherit the you're kingdom right. of God. You are not a Christian. You have not repented of your sin. The love of God is that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not biggest. It's not a big deal to obey God if you love God. The problem is, most people are not interested in the Bible. They're not interested in God. They're only interested in booze, premarital sex, yeah. rock and roll videos. You shutting up? I'll shut up when you repent of your uh, sin. Play my and Pluck it out. Get your hand for all you yeah. masturbators. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Jesus said, if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Jesus said, better for you to go through life with one eye, one hand, one foot, than it is to enter into hell where the fire is not quenched. Your sin, sinners, your masturbation, your pornography, your premarital sex, your drunkenness, your selfishness, your selfish lifestyle will get you thrown straight into hell fire. That's the word of God. A year and a half into open air preaching every week on the streets of Miami, 
God had really helped us raise up a core team there, a core group, and it took us a little while. We got everybody on the same page, everybody believing the same way, everybody just sold out and uh, preaching out there. He drinks and he smokes and he enjoys life. Who are you talking about? God. John? God. No, no. Praise the Lord. God does not smoke. That's no? God does not smoke. Him. Why not? He doesn't not. enjoy life? Does he enjoy life? He enjoys himself very much though. Like this? <laughs> um, shame on you. Grabbing your car. When there's little children around, that was unnecessary. You need to practice self-control. It's a good thing. But see, I remember the first time I preached, uh, Brother Doug and and Armstrong, they, they said, go ahead and get on the wall. There's a Lomas Park and there's a wall there. And I got on the wall, but I liken it to, to probably Israel, the Wailing Wall, because I went up there and I really could, I had my note cards and, and I really wanted to preach to the, to the people at South Beach, the regulars, the affluent, the lost, the revelers the drunkards. I just wanted to preach to them um, when Daniel talks about that he saw a great white throne and it talks about the Ancient of Days sitting on his throne but I could not, I could not preach it because I was just overwhelmed with tears and I just kept crying and, and Doug and Travis were there and they were like Go on, go on, Elizabeth. Go on. And and I couldn't. I just I, I kept trying to say it, but I just I just kept crying, reading just from a note card what was written in Daniel. But um, nonetheless, I obeyed God. I was trembling. I had fear and trembling, but I'm not sure. I think it was, I think it was more the fear of man and a combination. You know, I was fearing the Lord too because because I caught a glimpse of the reality of all of us having to stand before the judge of judges. Sir, all sinners are selfish. You're a oh, no, I'm not a sinner. Yes, you are. No, I, no, no. The Bible said he that's committing sin is of the devil. You're a sinner. No, no, the Bible said go and sin no more. The Bible said except you repent. You will all likewise perish. You don't love God. Well, not all Jews are going to hell, just most of them. But you're one of the ones that is. Are you afraid of me? What's that? Are you afraid of me? Well, I might be. I I don't know. Are you a lesbian? Not today. Are you a feminist? Absolutely. All right. All feminists need to get in the kitchen, grow some hair, and put a dress on. Sometimes the girls will, will come up to me and they'll ask me real sincere questions. Do, do I agree with my husband stating that a woman's role is in the home? And I always address, the, address that issue that yes, absolutely, God believes that a woman should be a chase keeper of the home, that there's roles, distinct roles for women in the same way that there's distinct roles for men. However, I realize that in their point in their life, they're young, they're, they're educating themselves, but they can still be a feminine, you know, they can still be a light in the midst of the crooked and the perverse generation that they're among, especially if they're a Christian woman. I realize that some of the ones that come up to me are, are not saved. They're, they're pagans, they're heathens. They've never been brought up or, or even seen examples of godly women. Well, there's a, um, quite a few things that take place before we go out there. Um, obviously we need to be devoted to Christ and we we endeavor to spend time with the master but then as far as like the preparation of course I get to do all the fun stuff all the womanly duty you know lay out his clothes for him prepare his make sure that his gear is all ready to go and when I say gear I mean his his Bible his water his voice recorder his um, obviously he, you know, 
he needs to be focused on what he's going to do, which is he's going out there fishing for men, fishing for souls. You know, they're weighed in the balance. They're in the valley of decision. So my husband wants to give himself more heartedly to that. So I endeavor to do some of the natural things, such as making sure that 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 he has a smooth time, ready to go out there to to go on the battlefield, to combat whatever may come. Because sometimes it's not all cookie cutter. It's an adventure for Christ when you're out there on the campus. So I kind of do the behind the scenes, all the fun stuff, you know, ironing his clothes and and um, just making sure that that he's ready to go out there getting his hat, his sunscreen. I mean, things that you might think is is tedious, but truly when you endeavor to be um, a wife of a preacher and you're a helpmate, those are important things to him. And um, it really helps him. And he goes out there, as one of the other brothers would say, with a positive attitude. Well, I try really to to study from the book of wisdom which is the book of proverbs and i really want to live one of the things that it talks about there is that that a woman in proverbs 31 it talks about she will do him good and not evil all the days of his life and that your, her husband does safely trust in her so i endeavor to be a helpmate to my husband when he's out there on the field and as well in, is in our married life and in our private life I want to be a helper to my husband and and encourage him and respect him in the call that God has given him to do, to obey the Great Commission. Turn from your sins, boys and girls. The Bible said, he that commits sin is of the devil. If you're committing sin, you're not a child of God, you're a child of the devil. That's right. The, Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. You know, somebody said that about everything our society has heard about the Bible and about God and about the gospel uh, teaches people to reject the true gospel. And so everywhere I've gone, everywhere I've preached, I've experienced opposition. Uh, you know, the, one of the biggest misunderstandings is that sinners are, are victims and not criminals and rebels and enemies of God. You know, 1 Peter 3.12 says, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The Bible says in Romans 5.10, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by His life. I needed to be reconciled to God because I was an enemy of God when I was a sinner. The Bible says in Colossians 1.21, You that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now is He reconciled. You know, Jesus said in John 3.19, He said, This is the condemnation that light has come into the world. And 1 John 1, 5 says, God is light. Light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light, neither comes to light lest his deeds should be reproved. Jesus said in John 15, 25, he said, they hated me without a cause. Jesus said in John 7, 7, he didn't say the Pharisees. He said, the world cannot hate you, but me it hates. Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Jesus said in John 15, 18, and 19, He said, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world will love his own, but because you're not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. So if they hated Jesus Christ because He testified to the world, their works, their deeds, their lifestyle, their actions were evil, they are in rebellion against God. And we're preaching the same message he preached and representing him accurately, then they're going to hate us too. We should expect to have opposition. Jesus said in Matthew 6 24, he said, No man can serve two masters. Either he'll hate the one and love the other. He said, If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14 15. 
So if somebody's not obeying Jesus Christ and keeping his commandments and living a holy life, it's not just that they're neutral, that they just, you know, it's not that they just don't love God, but they don't hate him. He said, if you don't love him, he said, you hate him. And he said in, he said in John 8, 34, he said, whosoever commits sin is a servant of sin. He said in Matthew 6, 24, no man can serve two masters. Either will hate the one and love the other. Romans 6, 16, he said, know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So a person can yield himself to sin or they can yield themselves to righteousness, but they're serving the one they obey regardless of what they say. So we've always experienced a lot of opposition. We've always been told that we're not doing it right. But, you know, if God is light and men that are in darkness hate the light and love darkness, and we're ac accurately rep representing to them a God that they hate, uh, then we should expect opposition. And, you know, all through, all through the Bible in the book of Acts, you know, it says that Paul was persuading, he was contending, he was disputing, he was reasoning. And so, you know, Pete, Jesus said in John 8, 45, he said, because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was the most loving man that ever walked the face of the earth. He was the most anointed man that ever walked the face of the earth. He was God in the flesh. He spoke the truth and most people rejected him. The Bible said, Matthew 10, 28, Jesus told you sinners, fear not them, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather fear God, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. I want you sinners to know you better fear God because God is holy. A holy God will cast guilty sinners into hell. You deserve to go to hell for your sin. God is perfectly just in casting you into hell for your sin of masturbation. <clears throat> why, why am I doing this? Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And there's a lot of sinners on this campus. Many of these students are involved in premarital sex. <clears throat> many of these students, many of these students are involved in smoking marijuana. <clears throat> many of these students are involved in watching pornography. <laughs> Many of these students say it's okay to be a homosexual. <clears throat> Many of these students tonight are going to go out and get wasted on beer. <clears throat> she Boys and girls, Jesus never said to come as you are. Jesus did not say come as you are. That's what that false prophet, that false Baptist Billy Graham said. Billy Graham is heading to hell. Jesus said, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. When a homo repents, he goes straight. When a drunkard repents, he goes sober. When a feminist repents, she submits. Repentance is a change of heart, a change of mind, a change of lifestyle. I'm here because you're sinning and God is angry and I care. <coughs> Jesus said, go and sin no more. The Bible said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The Bible said, be holy as I am holy. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The Bible says in 
Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and then that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, you know, Jesus spoke the truth. They didn't believe him. Men are deceived because uh, they don't love the truth. They have pleasure and unrighteousness. And so, so we experience a lot of opposition. We experience a lot of misunderstanding. But, you know, even from the natural, even from the natural, I like to use this example. If you have a guy that's 20 years old and he weighs 400 pounds, his blood sugar is 600 and his blood pressure is 260 over 220 and you know his parents like him and they want to be nice to him and they tell him oh you know you better try to eat a little better you know he doesn't really take it seriously just blows it off and uh, it doesn't make any changes but if he goes if he goes and sees a doctor and that doctor really cares about him and wants the best for him you know, say, hey, look, you need to straighten up your ways. You can drop dead and have a heart attack any minute here. So usually when people hear stuff like that, they're resistant to it. So we, you know, it takes time. People are resistant to new ideas. People are resistant to the truth. He is caring and he is loving, but he's very, he's very um, stern with the Word of God. You know, he's, he's not going to... Whether you like it or not, God's Word is truth. So he endeavors to share the truth with uh, the students, with the lost. So his preaching, his preaching to me is, is what we would see in the Bible, what, the way that the disciples preach, the way that the, the prophets preached, the way Jesus Christ preached. There's love, there's hate, there's peace, there's war. God is, God is not neutral. You know, there's this book that sometimes the students will think that God is, and God is not that. He's not shades of grades. He's either black or white. You're either for him or against him. And that's exactly how my husband endeavors to, to convey his preaching. He, he wants that message to come across. And here's one thing Jesus said, go and sin no more. You're still sinning. You're not obeying Jesus Christ. The Bible said about Jesus and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Jesus is a savior of those that obey him. Guess what? If you're sinning, you're disobeying him. He's not your savior and you're not saved, hypocrite. <clears throat> God's mercy is always conditional. God's mercy is always conditional. God's forget. Aha! You're no Christian. You just got exposed. Oh, because I swear. Because you cuss. Why don't you shut the fuck up, young man? You've got violent tendencies. That's right, I do. Where's your love? God, because supposedly the Pope called God to start all the crusades. Let me tell you something. The Pope, the Pope is heading to the same hell you are. Sacrifice six million the Pope is not a Christian. Catholics are not Christian. No, I think you are. You cuss like a gangster rapper. You dress like a Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus said, by your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Jesus said you'll give an account for every idle word that you speak. The Bible said their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. You're not saved. Your heart is wicked, sinner. You got The Bible said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It's only the pure in heart that are going to see God. Sin is an act of your will to disobey God. I want you sinners to know you chose to get drunk. You chose to fornicate. 
You chose to be a homosexual. You chose to smoke pot. Jesus said in Mark 7, 21, For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries and fornications. All these evil things come from within and the file of man. The reason you're a wicked pervert is your heart is wicked. Jesus said like you without saying cast the first stone. Because the Bible said Don't give me a fucking dog and then you can throw it in my face. Young man, watch your language, foul mouth. Why don't you shut the fuck up? You need to have your mouth washed out with soap. Then wash it, faggot. <laughs> this guy, this guy is homophobic. Homophobic? You're making <laughs> You are fuck off our streets and let people be who they want to be. Nobody you go to Westboro Baptist for you belong. I I am not a Baptist, but I'll tell you this. If, if you don't treat me any better, I'm not coming back here next week. Oh, I'm sorry. Where's your tolerance? Where's your tolerance? Practice what you preach. I'm not tolerant. I'm not tolerant. Go find somebody who wants to. I'm like God. I'm intolerant. God, no wonder atheism. The Bible said that Jesus loved righteousness and hated iniquity. The Bible said God hates all workers of iniquity. The Bible said God is angry with the wicked every day. The Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked, and in that loves violence, his soul hates. My husband is very intense. He, his preaching style, he's very, very intense. He's a, he's a godly man. He's a, he's a student of the Word of God. And his, his preaching is, is confrontational. It's, it's prophetic. It's a, a, it's a voice crying in the wilderness. He, he truly has a love for God and for his fellow man. So he goes out there and he, and he cries out to them to turn from their evil, wicked ways against a holy God that truly has done nothing but good to them and to us, just constantly. I mean, all the blessings that the Lord gives people and and they choose to use a holy name in vain. I mean, it, it, just, it just grieves his heart, but he has such a burden to, to preach the gospel without compromise. He chooses not to compromise. He chooses to to herald, to be the public crier in those settings. And so I, I love it. I, I really enjoy it. And when God pours out his anointing on him, it's it's a blessing to watch. And and I want the Lord to give him more fire, to just watch him burn. Bless his name. Bless the Lord. Jesus said, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believes not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. Hello, I work for UNT. I have a good question. You have a you have a question? I yeah, I had a question about you being here. Yes, I'm on the public sidewalk. <laughs> now, are you, are this you is a public. A si uh, I'm not on the university. I'm on a public sidewalk. Huh? You're on university campus, so there are rules. There we have a uh, yeah. No, that's a city have, street, uh, city sidewalk. Just like yeah. in front of the So Union. let's talk about it, not screaming. Well, let's talk about it. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not okay, leaving. Well, no, keep preaching. Has sponsored you. Just call the police or security. This is a city street. I'm doing city my job. Sidewalk. You don't have to tell me what to do. I, I got it. Um, no, who has job. sponsored you? Uh, I don't need here. sponsorship to be on a public <laughs> sidewalk. Do. No, I don't, I'm not on the university yes, property. You reach in front of the Union because it's a city street. Oh my God. No, you have to be sponsored no, by the city. You have to get city ordinance. You have to have the city proposed. No, you're lying. No. No, I've been preaching here for years. Then you have to be sponsored. No, not on Being city sidewalk. Being on campus. I'm not on campus. Okay, well, we can call the police. Yes, please call the police. Oh, wait, I have one more question for you, Mr. Mike, is it? Brother Micah, yes, I am Brother, Brother Micah Armstrong. Okay, I have one more question. You referenced, what was it, John 3, 36, 38? Yeah, Jesus said in John 3, 36, he that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. All you sinners, 
the wrath of God abides on you. That's why John the Baptist said, who has warned you to flee the wrath to come? The Bible said in Romans 1, for the wrath, the wrath, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. There's one problem with your theory. There is no John 3.38. The chapter I said John 3.36. You heard wrong, okay. potty mouth. Oh, that's fine because as it just <laughs> Young man, you're supposed to get dressed before you come out of your bedroom in the morning. Am I? Yes! I don't know if you've been to college before, but this is how we all dress. Jesus wore, uh, I, Jesus wore a robe. I... Jesus didn't wear a robe. Leviticus 18.26 Only God can judge a man. No, Leviticus 19.15 says In righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. No, Jesus said And besides that Jesus said Jesus said Beware of false prophets. And that's what you are. You are hey, false hey, false stop false. judging me. I thought stop you said... You. Look who's judging you here. But I say you're supposed to judge. Oh, that's right. Jesus said, beware of false prophets. How do you know if somebody's right or wrong, true or false, of God or not of God without making a judgment? I can judge because I'm righteous. Of course I'm sin free. <laughs> the Bible said open rebuke is better than secret love. Titus said, wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Carol, do you commit sin? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I have a question for you. Sin is breaking God's commandments. I have a question for you. What's your question? Are you a man of God? I am a Christian, yes. Do you know the Bible? Yes. John 3.20, can you recite it for me, please? John 3.20, yes. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that does evil hates the light. Neither comes to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. You're right. Sinners hate God and love sin. Sinners hate God. Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. The Bible said, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from your sin now, sinner. You're a Christian, right? Somebody hey, can you die a Muslim and go to heaven, Miss Christian? With your rainbow flag? Oh! Do you commit sin? Everyone commits sin. No, the Bible says go and sin no more. Huh? Like, I'm not a sinner. I. Huh? I don't commit sin. Hey guys, close in. Close in. That's right. How are you a better man than the bad? Yeah. How are you a better man than his job? How are you a better man? All right, you ready? I'm about. I'm about to school you on the Bible. You ready? You don't have to do Bible. Yeah. Listen to your heart. Proverbs 12. No, we're going to be judged by the Bible, not what your hypocrite pastor told you. How is he a hypocrite? How do you know? Proverbs 12:26 says, "The righteous." Is more excellent than his neighbor. How are you more? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. All right, all right. Yes, I am cleansed from all unrighteousness. Oh, oh. Revelation. John 4, 20. All right. Revelation 3, 19, it's in red. Jesus said, as many as I love, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. I really enjoy it. I think it's biblical evangelism. I think it's very effective. I see, I see the, um, you see the Bible coming to life to you when you actually go out there and be a witness for Christ, whether it's counseling the students or preaching to the students, at times just showing them Bible passages, reading it with them, rebuking them. It's actually biblical evangelism at its finest. There's only one way to experience is to go out there and be a witness. Yeah. Matthew 5, 27 and 28. You ready? Now, let me ask. Now, you ask that, right? Because you're a masturbator, aren't you? Wait, Matthew How many masturbators in the sound of my voice? Yeah, we get asked all the time, do you ever see anybody come to the Lord? And uh, yes, I, 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 with, I with all my heart believe that if a person is living right and has the Spirit of God working in their life, and is, is praying and, and, and believing God to do what he said he would do, then I believe we ought to expect to see fruit. You know, Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Jesus said in John 15.16, He said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain. You know, it talks about the fruit of the righteous being a tree of life. It talks about he that winneth souls is wise. I've done a lot of, since, you know, Florida is the state where I began preaching at, kind of my home state, I guess. I've done more preaching there than anywhere else. I've done a lot of preaching at Central Florida. When I began preaching on the streets of Miami, I had some, I had some young high school kids that started preaching with me, and one of them went off to Bible school, uh, Assembly of God Bible School. And uh, there was a kid there that heard me preaching at Central Florida. He got convicted. I have his testimony. And he got saved. And he, he dropped out of college at Central Florida and went into Bible college. And so uh, I heard about that later on. There was a young man at uh, Florida Atlantic uh, of, of Egyptian descent. And he heard me uh, preaching out at... Uh, Florida Atlantic in 2007 and uh, he was living in sin and uh, God set him free from sin he, he, he didn't he didn't believe he was going to go to hell and I was through the preaching and through follow-up work with him uh, he 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 got saved and he got set free from sin and he began going out by himself preaching on the streets downtown every Saturday night for several years and he ended up going to a SOPA conference in Miami. I don't forget what year that was that they had the SOPA in Miami and he gave his testimony there and it's it's on YouTube and so and then there's a uh, I think I think one of the I think one of the greatest open-air preachers of today one of the greatest campus preachers Ross Jackson. This is the love of God that we keep Do you keep God's commandments? No. But if you don't love God, and you're going to hell, hallelujah, thank God. God is disgusting. What you do and how you live, how you act, it angers God. It grieves God. And you don't care. If you grieve your mother, if you grieve your parents, if you grieve your children, you'll be upset. But you don't care that you grieve your own creator. You're a selfish sleuthy. Repent and stop dressing lusty. Because you're going to go to hell for it. I'm oh, sure you are. So what? No, the Bible says, fear not man, which has the power to kill the body. But after that, can you do no more? Well, Stop to... hating God. Fall in love with God. There'll be no problem. I was preaching out at ECU in 2007. I 
think it was sep it was early September. I believe it was in September. I preached out there three days, and I met him out there. And he was going to a Jesus-only charismatic church. And of course, Doc, God was dealing with him quite a bit, and he's he reading the NIV Bible. And so he sat there and uh, heard all the preaching and, and uh, knew it was the Word of God. And, and in his own testimony, uh, he, gives that, uh, he gives that preaching as the, the means. In fact, he, he recently, I didn't even ask for it, but I had other testimonies in the past from him. But I made a post about something, and he made a post there on Facebook talking about in 2007 a preacher named Micah Armstrong came to my campus and he credited that with his salvation there. So so now he's raised up and uh, he's he's probably the most praying man I know. And he's in a church and he's full of the Holy Ghost. And, and it's a thing for some reason that God is obligated to show you mercy and grace. Yeah. No, sir. No, ma'am. Yeah. 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 Why should God give you grace? And then I have other testimonies also. There was a, there was a young man at, uh, and these are just testimonies that we know about. I was, I was preaching at, uh, I was preaching at uh, University of North Florida in Jacksonville. I'm trying to think if it was 06 or 07. Anyway, I preached there a few days in 06. That was my first semester on the road. Went back in 07, it was a real cold week, and it was real, they had a lot of events going on all week, and it was a real slow week. Real small crowds that week, maybe maybe 15 people, at 20 people at the most. But my last day, I was walking away to leave, and a young man followed me, and uh, I have his testimony. Uh, but he came up and he told me, hey listen, I just want you to know, last time you were here, the uh, Spirit of God convicted me and I got saved. And later on, that young man, the next year when I went back, he preached with me on the campus. So, 
And I, you know, on a regular basis, I get in, uh, in, in, I had pastored a church in Florida for a year and a half and I went back on the road preaching on campus in October 2011. As soon as I got back on the road, I got a, uh, I got a contact on uh, email or from a student that had watched the debate that I'd had with Mike Sprott at uh, University of South Florida in 07. And uh, he, he told me that, that he got delivered from sin from watching those videos. So. In the world, whosoever, whatsoever's born of God overcomes the world. Not just a mature Christian. Whatsoever's born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. What's the world? 1 John 2.15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. A faith that over, a faith that saves is a faith that overcomes the world. Uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 14, and I remind you that God is not a liar. God means what He says. God intended us to understand the Bible. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Holiness is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbors yourself. You cannot love God and your neighbors yourself with all your heart and sin against them at the same time. Uh, the, <clears throat> the Bible said in Hebrew, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16 said, Be holy as God is holy. It doesn't say try. It's a commandment. Matthew 5, 48, Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's a commandment. What's the perfection he's talking about? The perfection of holiness. The perfection of loving God with all. And if God says all, he means all. That's what he commands. That's what he expects. That's what God requires. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I'm going to give you Jesus' sermon on masturbation. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Jesus said, You have heard it said of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. That's being faithful. But I, but I, but I say unto you, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if your right eye offends you, pluck it out and cast it from you. It'd be more profitable for you in life, Hulk, rather than having two eyes, than it'd be to enter into hell where the fire's not quenched. And then he says, if your right hand offends you, cut it off and cast it from you. One sin. <clears throat> Can we be free to masturbate in hell? There's no masturbation in hell, just masturbators. One sin got Adam kicked out of the garden. One sin got the angels kicked out of heaven. When Jesus Christ, God's Son who never sinned, was made a sin offering on the cross, the Bible said God turned His back on His own Son. The Bible said, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The Bible commands you, be holy as I am holy. Yeah. All right, Job was perfect. No, no, he God didn't. said, jo can you read? Your Job, is the only Job attempted perfect. suicide. No, jo Jesus is the only one who never sinned. But God said Job was perfect. No, he didn't. That's wrong. Uh, okay. Where in the Bible? Where right say? there, Miley Job. Miley Cyrus says nobody's perfect. Miley Cyrus, Miley Cyrus is a little hoe. Oh, hey, that's, hey, no, that's no, not very tolerant. That's not very tolerant. That's very Kim. You're a hypocrite. That's you are a hypocrite. Right? That's vulgarity. Kim Carnastian. Yeah. Kim Carnastian. Is a whore. Oh, yes. That's a whore, so and you That's know it. Right? Beyonce is a whore. So, you got a hit the person, you're just getting yourself. And Justin Bieber is a sissy. Well, we already knew that. Oh, well, we agree on one thing. Nobody's arguing that. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad.
Alright, hey, hey, I'll make you a deal. I'll make you a deal. Just try John 420 for me, and I'll be on your side. I've already have! Do it again. Wait, wait, wait. Jesus said in Revelation 319. John 420. Go ahead and I'll be on your side. So if you don't love your neighbor, you don't love God. Okay. Well, I love you. I love you sinners. That's why I'm out of rebuking you. You are. Jesus told people they were going to hell. Hell is full of people that Jesus loved. Hell is full of people that Jesus died for. Jesus told people he loved. He said, you serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Jesus said, depart from me, you cursed, in the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Jesus said, cast ye the unprofitable servant in the outer darkness. Jesus said, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear God, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That means, sinners, you better fear a holy God. Because God is going to cast your wicked soul into hell for your sin. That's why Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Hey, young man, put your shirt on. I asked the cop, I don't have to. Young man, you are the reason there's so many lesbians out here. You're turning all the girls off. Put your shirt on. You and you, my friend, are the reason there are so many atheists out here. Because you make Jesus seem like a fucking asshole when it is, in fact, you who are the asshole trying to look for both. No, anybody that's a sinner hates God. You can confirm that. No, you're an atheist because you hate God. God. You're an atheist because you're selfish. No, 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 no. He's an atheist. You are selfish. You You've chosen to be selfish. You, the Bible says, The fool said in his heart, There is no God. The fool said in his heart, I can The Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I guess that makes you a fool. John 13, 33 to 40. Another verse on love. Why are you going to start loving God and stop sinning? Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Sin is breaking God's commandments. Jesus did not go around preaching God loves you. No, the apostles in the book of Acts, they preached about God's unconditional, God's conditional mercy. Peter said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out. No repentance, no turning, no forsaking of sin. What about Matthew 7? No forgiveness for sin. Are you a Christian? Yes, sir. Uh, can you die a masturbator and go to heaven? Yes. Yep. You're not a Christian. <clears throat> when I go into the open air, the message that I preach, that I believe is the most biblical message that we see throughout the Gospels and the book of Acts, which the book of Acts would be our pattern of how the early church did things, where they preached. And I also believe it's the most needed message in America today, is the message of repentance. Jesus said, I came not, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. There's a lot of sinners at UNT. That's why I'm out here and I'm calling all these sinners to repent of their sin. Because Jesus said, except you repent, you will all like, well, you're not saved, you are condemned. You don't know that. You don't know Of course I do. It's funny because I actually remember the day I got saved. You got, you, you've not been saved. You got a filthy heart, a thick, filthy mouth. You've got a filthy head. And I want you off my camera. No, I, I've got a pure heart. You've got a pure heart. The Bible said, blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. You know, Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, He said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
most of the time in America, the gospel is not preached. And Mark 1.1 1, 1 says this, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Verse 4, John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. So in Mark 1.1 1, 1 it says, The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then in verse 4 it starts with John the Baptist preaching repentance for the remission of sins. America has heard lots about forgiveness or remission of sins, very little about repentance. And there's no forgiveness without repentance. And Matthew 3, 1 and 2 says, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, and I hear people say all the time to me, Well, you can be like John the Baptist if you want to. But see, I would rather be like Jesus Christ. The problem with that, though, is that in one chapter later, Matthew 4, 17 says, From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mark chapter 1 verse 14, 10 verses later, where we left John the Baptist, says, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So there is no gospel preaching without repentance. In Revelation 14, 6, and 7, it talks about uh, the everlasting gospel is fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. You know, the gospel is good news, but uh, most lost, hardened sinners wouldn't think it'd be good news to them, a message like that. Jesus said in Luke 5, 32, He said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. If people really want to be like Jesus Christ, and he came to call sinners to repentance, then we've got a responsibility and an obligation to do as he did. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3 and 5, he said, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you will all likewise perish. He said, if you don't turn from your sin, you are going to burn in hell. I like to say it like this. He said in Mark 1, 15, he said, repent and believe the gospel. A sinner cannot turn to Jesus Christ unless he turns his back on his sin. And to turn his back, uh, uh, to turn to sin, he must turn his back on Jesus Christ. You can't, uh, you don't do one without the other. The first message preached on the day of Pentecost, uh, when the, ch the church started, Acts 2.38, Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. No repentance, no remission of sins. One chapter later, Math, uh, Acts 3.19, Peter said, Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. No repentance, no conversion, no forgiveness of sins. Acts 17.30, the Apostle Paul on Mars Hill, uh, here he's preaching to heathen, he's preaching to non-Jews. He says, The times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, wherever he's given assurance unto all men that he has raised him from the dead. Acts 20, 21, Paul, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts 26, 20, Paul said that men should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. In other words, You've proved that you've really repented. You've really forsaken your sin. You've really had a change of heart by the way you live your life. Matthew 3.8 says, Bring forth therefore fruits, meet for repentance. Luke 3.8, Bring forth therefore fruits, worthy of repentance. Mark 6.12 says, So we've got, we've got John the Baptist preached it. Jesus Christ preached it. We've got the Apostle Peter preached it. The Apostle Paul preached it. I mean, with that kind of a line up there, who cares what anybody else says about how they think you ought to preach it? It turns people off. It doesn't work and, and all this. Mark 6, 12 said this about the disciples. They went out and preached that men should repent 
and it says, They cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. And then in Luke 24, 47, it gets down to you and I, the church. Jesus told the church in Luke 24, 47, He said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in His name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So He didn't say just preach forgiveness. He said preach repentance and remission. And then verse 48, He said, you are witnesses of these things. And then in verse 49, he says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The whole purpose of the endowment of power from on high is to go into all the world where Satan holds sway and dominion over lost, hell-bound sinners, blinded by the devil, slaves to the devil, in bondage to the devil, and preach repentance and remission of sins to them. Jesus told the Apostle Paul in Acts 26, 18, Jesus commanded Paul, and if he, this, he commanded Paul to do this, I believe it, he, he commands us to do this. He said to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness unto light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that's in me. You know, Everybody in America, most of the time, the way the, the professing church does things, they want to go right into remission of sins. But before we can do that, they've got to be turned from darkness unto light, from the power of Satan unto God. This infers that every lost person, every sinner, is under the power of the devil. But before we can turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they can turn and repent and get re forgiveness for their sins, they got to have their eyes opened. And so in the open air, most of the time, uh, we are awakening the masses. Not our only goal, certainly not our ultimate goal, but probably our first goal is to open their eyes to the fact that they are lost, to open their eyes to their sin God's righteousness and holiness and the judgment that awaits them. And so, uh, the, the, the main message that we preach in the, that I preach in the open air is the message of repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Well, I would have to echo the message of Jesus Christ, except you repent, you'll likewise perish, you'll be destroyed. And one of the things is that Jesus says that you need to repent. He, in Mark, he talks about repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That means that your kingdom must go and the king of glory must now reign righteousness in your life. That you have to surrender. You have to obey the one worthy of all glory and honor, which is Christ Jesus, the king of kings and lord of lords, who's returning back. I love Jesus. I'm so grateful for what He's done for me. I, I think He's wonderful. I think He's Savior. I think He's Master. I think that He is He is the only hope for humanity, the only hope for, for the lost, for the damned, and obviously for those that are living out, living out their days for Him. That's what I think about Jesus. I love Him. There's never been a man like Jesus. Bless His holy name. And, you know, he came to die for, for the sinner man, for the prostitute. It was love that, that showed his love towards these druggies, these rebels. So Jesus Christ is, is the only true wise God. The Bible said, boys and girls, Jesus loved righteousness and hated iniquity. The Bible said, you that love the Lord hate evil. You know, I stopped my life of sin because I fear God. The Bible said the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You know, I fear a holy God. Jesus said, fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather fear God, which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. I want you to know, sinners, you better fear God, because a holy God will cast your wicked, sinful soul into hell. God's gonna cast all sinners into hell. 
Jesus said, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. You don't turn, you will burn. <clears throat> to turn to Jesus Christ, you must turn your back on your sin. Jesus said, repent and believe the gospel. But also I, I noticed that there are so-called professing Christians or what we would call hypocrites or the apostasy. There's a great big uh, group that is actually deceived and then of course they oppose you because they think that you're lacking in love. But what they're missing from the big picture is that you are showing these lost people love. You're giving them biblical love, true love. You're willing to lay down your life for them. Whether you're misunderstood or whether you're heard or slandered, but you're still willing to tell them the truth, you know, at whatever cost. It costs Jesus everything to bring us the truth. Uh, here's what Jesus said, young man. Jesus said in Revelation 3.19, He said, As many as I love, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Jesus Christ showed his love for hell-bound hypocrites like you by rebuking them in their sin and urging them to repent. The Bible said open rebuke is better than secret love. The Bible said preach the word. I want you to know the Bible said, Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. The Bible said, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. I'm out here rebuking you hell-bound sinners because I love you, but you don't love God. God you don't love God. You don't love God. Who are you to decide whether or not we love someone else? The Bible said, this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. The Bible said, Love is the fulfilling. Y'all feel it? Y'all feeling this? I tell you, I'm feeling this. <clears throat> the Bible said, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Young man, you don't love God. How are you to decide that? <clears throat> Jesus said, Except you repent, you will all likewise perish. Why is this music instead? Why is this music instead? No Texas! No Texas! No Texas. People that have been influences to me in my life, some of them I know in person, some of them I don't know in person. I'd be like most of us, somebody said the, the, the product of many tributaries. I've started reading Ravenhill's books. So I was really influenced uh, by Michael Brown and Leonard Ravenhill. I started getting really uh, stirred about the need for revival. And I always had a burden for my, for my country. I hated the way it was going. And I believe we, we, were, we were coming under the judgment of God and that I could make a difference. And I, was, I really spent a lot of time praying and seeking the Lord while well, I was putting up a lot of prayer there. But you know, if you, you can have you can have a uh, tremendous rain come down from he, from from the skies, but if there's no seed in the ground, there's not going to be any harvest. No fruit's going to come up. 
So I was very convicted to get out there and start preaching. But I never actually did it at that point. And so, but God was dealing with my heart all through this and, and I believe preparing me. So uh, Dr. Michael Brown, Leonard Ravenhill. And I was always, I'd always heard about Finney and the, the results that came through his preaching. So I was always intrigued by Finney. Finney really opened up my eyes to the fact that it was a commandment by God. It was, in other words, the test of salvation is whether you live a holy life or not. I didn't even believe you, I was, I didn't even believe you could stop sinning based on what I was taught. My favorite book, my favorite book of all time by anybody, to this date I've read it 24 times, is an E.M. Bounds book, Power Through Prayer. I've, we I've read Why Revival Terry's uh, 11 times. Now, are you a Christian? Yes, sir, I am. All right, do you masturbate, yes or no? You masturbate. All right, can you, die a, can you die a homosexual and go to heaven? Yes or no? No. You can't. All right, you might be a real Christian. Sir, I feel like you're doing this all wrong. I'm, I'm sorry, I, just from my perspective, seeing this, I feel like we need to spread God's love, not His wrath. Oh, well, yeah, Jesus said, as many as I love. I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore and repent. Romans 1.18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. And you know what Jesus said in John 3.36? He preached wrath. He said, He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. So these sinners have the wrath of God abiding on them. Love is patient, love is kind. I've been very long suffering with you hypocrites. I've been very long suffering with you bunch of pot smokers. May I apologize to you? May I apologize to you? I've been very long suffering with you fornicators. May I apologize to you? May I apologize? I've been very long suffering with you homosexuals. I've been very long suffering with you rock and rollers and gangster rappers. I've been very long suffering with you masturbators and porno watchers. Sir, may I apologize? Do you like anybody? Huh? I love all you sinners. Bible trivia. Why? Love thy neighbor. Uh, no other law is greater than this. Start loving God. Start loving God. Love thy neighbor and love God. The Bible says, This is the love of God that we keep His commandments. This is the love of God that we keep His commandments. Jesus said, If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. What sin? Sin is breaking God's commandments. Young man, if you sin against your neighbor, you don't love your neighbor. God hates you. 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 I also want to obey the Great Commission, which says go preach this gospel to every creature. On the campuses, you encounter many creatures, international, uh, local, uh, United States of American citizens that yet have never heard the truth, have never heard the gospel. They've never opened up a Bible. Bible says, Blessed are you when all men shall speak well. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness' sake. You're the guy that says you're a Christian and you cuss like a gangster rapper. Who's got a racist because I'm black, I'm a gangster rapper? Not all gangster rappers are black. You don't know what the fuck you are talking about.
a gangster rapper. Don't call me a fucking gangster rapper. I'll be a gangster rapper right here. If that's what I you want. I said you cuss like a gangster rapper. I can show you a gangster rapper. Ain't nobody here scared of you, sinner. <clears throat> and by the way, your breath stinks. You're you need a breath mint. <clears throat> The Bible said, he that commits sin is of the devil. Jesus said, you're of your father the devil. You're a flat out hypocrite. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. If you're not going to be any more respectful, I'm not coming back here next week. Finally, you see what we're all trying to say. Hey, we'll see you soon. You students are not very tolerant. Where's your tolerance? That's what you're going to hear on Judgment Day. Jesus Christ is going to say goodbye. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Hey, hey, hey. Goodbye. I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work in equity. Depart from me, you cursed in the everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. Cast ye the unprofitable servant in the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I want you sinners to know, you better depart from sin now. As bad as things look, I, I just, I just do not have the mentality at all to give up and throw in the towel. I mean, if I'm going down, I'm going down fighting every inch of the way. He's committed. He's committed to Christ and he's dedicated to his cause. Young man, are you, have you read 1 Peter? Yeah, and I've also read the Sermon on the Mount. 1 Peter 4.18 says, If the righteous, if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Go home, 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 go home. The students, the, the students' behavior on the campuses, one of the things that you find is that they don't like to be exposed. They don't like to be called out on their sins is one thing that I've seen. However, nonetheless, the Bible still says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we're trying to get the students to assess where they're headed. They're on a broad path of destruction. They need to look back and see that narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. We're, we're trying to provoke them to look at their lives and look at the mirror of God's Word. The condition of America, no doubt, is, is, is terrible. The direction that America's going, we all know that. However, I, I'm really bothered by the mentality of a lot of the professing church and even people that I believe are, are godly praying people that, that believe the truth and, and supposedly believe in the power of God. It's almost like there's, a, there's such a, a fatalistic, defeatist mindset. I, I can remember back in the 80s, people acting like it was too late for America. Here we are, what, uh, maybe, uh, maybe even 30 years later and uh, you know, America hasn't been destroyed yet. Well, you know, what would have happened back in the 80s if people would have, would have uh, had the mindset 
that we can make a difference. You know, I love what it says. I love what it says in, in Joel 2.12. It says, Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn even to me with all of your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning, and rend your heart, not your garment. And turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Verse 14, he says, Who knows if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. And in verse 15, he said, Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. And so, but I think, I think people would rather just sit back and allow the judgment of God to fall than they would to obey what the Bible tells us to do, to really get a burden and really get concerned. Jesus said in Matthew 26, 38, he said, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. So, you know, it's painful to carry a burden. You know, it's a price to pay. And, 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 and it's easier, it seems like it's easier for people just to lay back and prophesy judgment and doom on America rather than it is to believe what God said and be the one to stand in the gap. What? You're never perfect like me? Well, yeah, yeah, you're heading to hell. You're a child of the devil. Bible, Bible said he that commits sin is of the devil. Anybody that's committing sin is a child of the devil. You're heading to hell if you're committing sin. No, no, well, Jesus didn't accept you. Jesus did not accept you. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus said, all right, let me guess, let me guess. Young man, you know all liars have their part in Lake of Fire, right? All right, with that in mind, answer this question. Do you masturbate? Yes. Aha. <clears throat> uh -huh. Oh. Young man, you're a whoremonger. Uh, yeah. Well, you're not going to find her fornicating. You know what? The right one will not be some girl that has premarital sex. Any girl that has premarital sex, God calls them a whore. Jesus told that hoe to go and sin no more. I used to be a sinner. <clears throat> no, I got born again. Bible said you must be born again. Bible said except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the Bible said, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. The Bible said, whosoever is born of God sinneth not. The Bible said, awake to righteousness and sin not. The Bible, I used to sin. That's right. <clears throat> Young man, stop judging. Yeah, but I'm allowed to judge. I'm allowed to judge because I'm sin free. I can judge because I'm righteous. <clears throat> no, uh, you've, you've been listening to Tupac. Tupac is in hell. Tupac's the one that said only God can judge. No, no, God, God doesn't hear the prayers of sinners. I stopped my life of sin. Jesus told that hoe to go and sin no more. I stopped listening to Vanilla Ice years ago. I stopped listening to the Beastie Boys. I stopped listening to Run DMC and Two Live Crew. Hard times spreading just like the flu. Watch out, homeboy, don't let it catch you. P -p 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 Prices go up. When your pockets are down, when you got short money, you're stuck on the ground. Turn around. That's what you need to do. Turn around. Stop your sin. You smoke pot, you're heading to hell. You have sex outside of marriage, you're heading to hell. You masturbate, watch porn, you're heading to hell. You have homosex, 
If you're okay with being a homosexual, you're a queer cuddler, a homo hugger, sodomite sympathizer, you're heading to hell. <clears throat> you listen to gangster rap and rock and roll, you're heading to hell. You listen to gangster rap, you end up in hell with Biggie Smalls. <clears throat> I want you to know anybody that's a sinner hates God. If you're a sinner, you hate God. If you use profanity, <clears throat> you hate God. Bible said, listen up all you gangster rappers. The Bible said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Bible said, by your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Bible said, you'll give an account for every idle word that you speak. Your heart's wicked because your mouth is filthy. <clears throat> You're heading to hell. Now, when I began preaching open air in Miami, I began... I began going on the internet and trying to study and find out and learn about open air preaching. Of course, when I started preaching on the street, you know, I'd very seldom get anybody. One of the first times I started preaching, I, I, I started preaching there and this guy stopped and sat there and listened to everything I said, standing on the wall at South Beach. So I got done preaching, I walked up to him and I said, are you a Christian? And the guy looked at me and he said, Italia. Italia. So he explained to me he was from Italy. He didn't understand a word I said. He just thought it was pretty amusing that I was up there preaching on the wall. But, uh, you know, I, I didn't really have too many people listening to me. But I started studying and I began, and, and I remember I went on uh, John Duncan's website and I saw his pictures. I said, well, this guy gets these huge crowds preaching on the campus. And, you know, and when I began preaching on, on the streets, I felt real good. My conscience felt real clear because I knew I was obeying God. I knew I was doing what I was supposed to and I was pleasing God. And I wasn't discouraged that I wasn't getting crowds. But I still felt there was something more there that, that God wanted me to do. You know, it was like I, was, I, was, I wasn't condemned, but it's almost like I had a, a, a dissatisfaction there that there's got to be more to this, something else. And I remember, I guess I found out about Holy Hubert and I probably Googled Hubert's name and somehow or other Jed Smock's book came up Who Will Rise Up and just came up there on my computer screen and I I was teaching school at the time and so for about a week I'll never forget those days every day after after a work and I got my work done I just sit there for several hours and read Who Will Rise Up after I got done reading that book uh, I, I, I was the kind of person, I couldn't tell you what I dreamed two seconds after I woke up. But after I read that book, I would, I would dream all night long for days, weeks, and months that I was preaching on a college campus. I want you sinners to know hell is full of people that God loved. Hell is full of people that Jesus died for. You know why they're in hell? Because they didn't love God. Do you love God, young lady? You don't. So you know you're a sinner. Repentance is a change of heart, change of mind, change of lifestyle. But as far as women that have inspired me, truly I, um, I would think, I would say Sister Cindy Smock, she was a real inspiration to me to go out there and, and, and just, I mean, she's got a few sermons and that's what she uses and she does a fine job at it building up the crowd and sometimes getting them angry, but at the same time provoking them to, to, to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying to those students. Huh? What's that? Uh, no. Uh, no. The Bible said all have sin, past tense. In fact, believe it or not, I used to sin. Yeah, I used to sin. I didn't say I never sinned. <clears throat> no. Uh, hey, young man, who wrote 1 Thessalonians? Who wrote the Apostle Paul? Yeah, don't you Baptists know any verses besides 
Romans 3, 23. <clears throat> well, you're some kind of, what are you, a Calvinist? Huh? Uh, young man, <clears throat> who wrote 1 Thessalonians? The Apostle Paul. I know you don't care. You don't care. You don't love God. You're not serious. You know what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 2.10? Paul said, You are witnesses and God also. How holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among them that believed. Paul said God as his witness, his lifestyle, his behavior, his action before God was holy, just, and unblameable. Now, Paul said, without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Peter said, be holy as I am holy. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Can you masturbate and be holy? All right. What, so what, how much sin can you commit and still be holy? Romans 6, 14 said, Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under law, but under grace. Young man, the grace of God gives you power to live above sin. I was out praying one morning after about a year and a half into this, preaching on the street every week. And God's dealt with my heart about resigning my job, selling my house, and going out in faith. So I came back in the house, told my wife, and she said, well, I'd say, she said, well, I'd say, let's do it. But, you know, this was, this was something that's going to be, you know, 20 years down the road or something like that. Well, I suppose we started in 2006, but we did take a, about a year off, 18 months to, to pastor a church in Florida. So it's probably been five and a half years on the road. There's times that, like any... I, I suppose any any woman, you, you miss the the structure, the stability. You you miss your your home or what you're comfortable with. But then there's also times that you're so grateful for the privilege and the honor to to be out there and be a witness for Christ, and be able to to lead sinners to the cross of Calvary, to lead them to Christ, to Jesus Christ. And uh, but when I read when I read that book. Uh, it really put an urgency in me and I and I thought about it from the natural I said you know even if I do this and I just fail and just lose everything I don't want to be 65 years old and wonder what would have happened you know did I miss God I, I'd rather I'd rather know that I tried to obey God and and missed it than that I never even tried to obey God huh where did Jesus preach love? I like what Jesus said in John 3, 36. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. He that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Jesus said anybody that doesn't believe in Jesus Christ has got the wrath of God abiding on them. Romans chapter 1 said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. Young man, you got the wrath of God abiding on you. You don't obey Jesus Christ. Jesus said, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter in the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. You don't go to heaven because you call Jesus Lord. Young man, is that girl trying to seduce you? No, no, Jesus said he does. He doesn't obey Jesus. He said he sins every day. Everyone does. No, the Bible, no. The Bible said he that commits sin is of the devil. You're a child of the devil if you sin every day. No, no, Jesus is the only one who never sinned. But when I got born again, I stopped sinning. Ah, oh, you cuss like a gangster rapper. You're wicked. You got a filthy heart, young man. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. 
Jesus said, by your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. You'll give an account for every idle word that you speak. You know what the Bible said? Hello, officer. Hey, how are you doing? How are you, sir? How's everything going? Everything's going good. People treating you well? Well, as I expect. Good, good. good. Yes, sir. Good to hear it. How long are you folks going to be here? You going to get this for the maybe video, for, three the, hours for the internet? Of, probably three hours, maybe. Okay. Maybe how about long three. Have you been here? A few, uh, half an hour. Okay. 25 minutes. I, yeah, okay. Let me read you what you're saying. Where are you from? Who, you, who do you associate with? I'm from Florida. Yeah, I mean, what, what church do you associate with? I'm a Trinitarian Pentecostal. Trinitarian Pentecostal? Okay. Yes, sir. Very good, very good. So, uh, what do you just go through from campus to campus? or? Yes, sir. And how, like, give me an idea where you've been, where you're going. Well, I was at Texas State. I was at uh, Sam Houston. Oh, yeah? I'm not sure about next week. Maybe Florida State. Florida State. So how do you, I mean, is this, a, is this like a missionary ministry type mm -hmm. thing you go around? Yes, sir. And so what do you do? Hand out literature? And no, preach. Yeah. We're not really hand. We, somebody wants literature, we'll give them some. We don't really hand it out. So, I mean, I mean, because I do a lot of mission work with you, so I'm just, yes, I'm sir. asking you out of, I'm yes, inquisitive. Sir. Uh, yes, sir. Well, he can answer your, or, or he can answer your question. I'm trying to preach to them. Yeah, well, Unless, I'm, I'm interested in talking to you because you're the guy that's presenting it. I was seem to know what you're doing so yes sir but i don't want to but i don't want to you know i me talking to you if you're already a christian i want to preach the people here that need to hear this well that's good and, yes sir and i understand that of course i think we both know that i'm not sure you're doing as much preaching as you're doing just inside huh and i'm sorry can you hear me on the on the deal good enough Oh, yeah, I oh, okay, okay, good. Inciting. Yeah, inciting. inciting. When, you, Preaching. when you jump towards people and point at them, and you make statements, certain statements about uh, certain racial groups. Racial? Certain like what? Racial sexual groups? Sexual orientation groups. Sexual like orientation. You mean homosexuality yeah. is not a sin? The Bible said it's a sin. I'm not here to debate that with you. I'm just trying to tell you that you put yourself in peril mm -hmm. when you do that. Now, well, if you... If you preaching if preaching I, is perilous. Sir, listen to me. How old are you? 46. Four, same age as I am. That's awesome. Um, have you always been a Christian? Of course not. When, when did you become a Christian? Thirteen years ago, 13 maybe. Years. What'd you do before then? I sinned. I was a sinner. Well, I mean, what'd you do for a living? I was a school teacher. School teacher. Okay. Perfect. Would you teach school in the same fashion that you're out here talking to these kids? Of course not. I'm out here preaching. No, 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 no. Just not preaching. No, no sir. Just as a, just in the way that you instruct kids, is that how you would is that how you would do it? If you were teaching a math class here, is that how you'd get in there and teach a math class? No, they're forced to go to class. Okay. They're not so, forced to listen second, to me. Second thing I was going to tell you, is, you have to go to school. Second thing I was going to tell you is, or ask you, is does it make more sense to when someone shouts at you, do you approach them or do you flee from them? Uh, well, the crowd, the draw. No, sir. No, sir. I'm just asking you a question. Yeah. When you lift up your voice, people hear and they come oh, to okay, listen. Okay. Okay. Very good. If I come out but, here and talk, then nobody's going to hear me. But uh, also, when you do that, you're disruptive. I mean, look what you do to the campus. You've got what? people down here upset. They're not upset yeah. over your words. They're just upset over your. Oh, they're, no, they're upset over my words. I really, if they are, it would be because you were trying to get them upset, I would say. Well, I've recorded everything I've said. I've said nothing but Bible verses. Okay. That's good. That's good. But you also know you know, that it, there it, are people it, here among us that may not necessarily be Christians. Of course. Right? That's what and, we're out here for. Well, I don't think being offensive to them is really going to change their mind. Well, Jesus said he was a stone of stumbling. What is, your, what is your name? I'm sorry, I didn't even ask. So did you want me to answer that or not? Uh, or, I want your name first, please. My name is Armstrong. Armstrong, okay. Armstrong, I'm Heath Allen Character. I'm the chief of police here. Yes, now go sir. ahead and answer your question. Jesus said he was a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Okay. The gospel is the gospel is by nature. Yeah, I'm the new chief here. Gospel is by nature offensive. I've been here since 2005. Yeah, I, I think. Have you been to the UT Tyler campus, TJC campus? Oh yeah, I've been to TJC. Yeah, I, I think I saw you there. And typically, we you know we have verbal debates with the students. They're offended at what we say. We're offended yeah. at what they say. But all that's perfectly legal. You know. It's okay well, up to, to a point. Now, if people if people come to begin to tell me that that they're afraid that this guy's going to get jumped on because of some of the stuff he's saying, well then. That moves out of the First Amendment. It also moves out of sure. If someone yeah. if someone and, jumps on us, you need to arrest. Well, no, 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 no. Even yeah. even the threat of see because we have to be yeah. well, you proactive. can't predict the future. Uh, you never, are correct. But if someone comes up to me and they say this gentleman right here is going to strike that kid in the face, he said he's going to do it. 
Do I wait till you strike that if young we, man? No, sir. I'm asking you a question. Yeah. Please listen. Please listen. You I'm talk listening. too much. If I go over there I and I stop much. you yeah. from striking that person in the face, yeah. that is my duty to no, preach yeah, peace. Yeah. A, a physical threat is against the law. We're not physically threatening violence against him. No, 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 no. Uh, You're not. Yeah. But I said if, if people do, are saying they're fixing yeah. it, you know, then Well, the then law says you need to control the crowd, not arrest the preacher. I'm sure you know that. Uh, no, sir. That's not what the law says. That is yeah, the does. law. You don't violate our rights because they're disordered. I'm not you violating your rights. No, you don't. If they get crazy and violent, mm -hmm. they need to leave, not us. Unless you're yelling fire in an auditorium. Well, unless, then you've got this. is a public, that's, that's an auditorium's you private might property. You go back and look at some of your civil liberty stuff again, too. Oh, sure have. I got yeah. them in my pocket. Well, I can read them to you. Yeah, I know. I, the I've devil uses those. We've done lawsuits all over the country. Well, I'm sure you have. But, but hecklers don't have veto power. That's what the Supreme Court ruled. You know, well, they're right. well. There's difference between hecklers there's veto. difference between hecklers, like at a public debate, and there, there's a difference yeah. between a person getting out, yelling things at cars going by, and things like that, and that person becoming well, we're upset. Just, we're just preaching the Bible, and they're going to get upset. I can guarantee it. Well, that's and, that, and, and some of them might want to be violent. Yeah. And uh, I, I would hope that you would protect us from their violence. That's your sure, job. Sure, that's my you know? job. You and, bet. Uh, but we're, we're not going to use fighting words. Uh, we're not, you know, yelling fire in a in a in a theater. Honestly, uh, we're but, gonna we're gonna preach the Bible. They're gonna right, get upset, right. and we're gonna have a verbal debate about well, it. Well, and you've on, I mean, honestly, you've uh, you've obviously sat down and and had this all planned out. I'm sure you seminar on it and everything else, this, and workshop. We do this yeah, full time. absolutely, absolutely. So you know that just by me standing here visiting with you, I'm not violating any of your rights. No, no, no. But but the direction you're going, you you're, seem to be saying that if if we preach and they get upset, we've done something illegal, and that's not true. Well, you you would be a party to it, it I would say. Like no, no, because no, young ladies, let me handle this. Truth is, okay. truth is, I'm you too, young man. I'll take care of this. I'm offended at what you've told me so far. Okay. In fact, I'm upset over what you've told me. Okay. Well, but then, that, I, but then, you didn't you didn't break the law by offending. No, because we're having discord. Yeah. And we're not having discord. Yeah. We're having discourse. Right. You know, I've never seen violence on this campus. I've been preaching here since 05. And, well, that's uh, that's good. But I've, I've had one complaint today. A lady was very upset. Sure. She said she was moved to the point that she thought she wanted to do something about it. Yeah. You might get more complaints about people not well, liking what we're saying. Well, I mean, and you need to tell them, listen, you live in America. You can what is the truth. purpose of the I mean, First it's, Amendment? It's obvious, that it's, it's obvious that it's a foolish and ineffective way of spreading the gospel. I mean, that's, No, we that, see people saved all the time. Yeah. But that's illegal. Yeah. Yeah. Preaching that's of the cross to them that perish that. foolishness. That's a Bible verse. The law. Yeah, uh, the law recognizes this is legal. We can have a debate. We can discuss well, you, it. You sure can. And if, but if, if they get offended, you know what? They can walk well, away. Well, and also, if I have one person come up and say that they're offended and it meets certain criteria within the law in the state of Texas, you can be issued a disorderly what, conduct. What's that criteria? Why don't you look it up? You seem to be a pretty well, law. No, you're the one threatening me with I'm, disorderly conduct. Well, what's the criteria? Not a threat. I just I'm making conversation. Yeah. No, Why don't you look it up? We're going to say homos go to hell, drunkards go to hell, whores go to hell. And that's perfectly legal for us to say. Yeah, and you're right up there with Westboro Church. Uh, now, homos Baptist are going to be offended. Man. Homos are going to be offended. The are you, are, gonna be are offended. you going around and, and, and also uh, uh, doing the... I think uh, you have a conflict of interest I think, are you, are you because going, of your religious Are you going beliefs. there doing the whole, uh, uh, you know... Uh, Protesting. Uh, we're not Baptists. We're not. We're not Baptists. Well, you, you're kind of behaving along the same lines. No, line. we're not Calvinists either. No. That's why I ask. Everything you're saying is irrelevant to the law. Because you've picked up some pretty good, pretty good stuff there. Well, no. What's a, what's irrelevant to me is the fact that whether you stand here or not. Okay. What what's relevant to me is if you do anything to disrupt the student body. That's that's just relevant. Yeah, well, I think your definition of disruption uh, is different than the law's definition of disruption. Speaking and people getting offended is not disorderly conduct. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. I can sit here and say that, uh, you know, I don't particularly like people who wear hats. Sure. And I can sit here and say it all day long. Sure. But if I start running up to people, poking my finger in their face and saying things to them like that, coming at them aggressively, and what's considered aggressive based on community standards. Pointing at someone's not illegal. Well, I think you know what I'm talking about. He just I'm cussed just, me out. Who did? The guy that I pointed at. Well, yeah. He cussed me out. Really? Yes. Did, yes. Were you offended? No, are but you I pointed. Are you going to file charges? Of course not. Then why are you even mention it then? That's why he pointed at him, is what he's saying. You have to understand. I wasn't that. randomly no, he pointed pointing at, at first, people. And then he said it because I, I was watched the whole exchange no, up here. No, you didn't. Right. Yes, it did. No, he, he cussed me out and I said, young man, you have a foul mouth. I said, Jesus said, by your words you'll be justified, by your words you'll be condemned. Yeah. Yeah. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yeah. Well, well we you, you believe the, the preaching. Yeah, go ahead. I'm just going to stay down here and yeah. and uh, just observe. Yes, sir. All right. Good. Well, have at it, brother. Go ahead. Yes, sir. <clears throat> now, boys and girls, the Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, 
he that's committing sin is of the devil. If you are committing sin, if you are a sinner, you are not a child of God. You're a child of the devil. The Bible talks about sins. The Bible said, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, before he got saved, Paul said he was the chief of sinners. But uh, 1 Peter 4.18 says, 1 Peter 4.18 says, If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Bible may, no, the Bible said, yes, of course I have. I'm a Christian. <clears throat> Bible said in 1 John 3, 9, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. No, I, I don't lie. All liars have their part in the lake of fire. Bible said, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. And you mean Bible said, whosoever is born of God sinneth not. She, no, I'm not a pervert. I'm delivered from sexual sin. No, I'm happily married. My wife is right there. Oh, but okay, okay. <clears throat> Bible says, whosoever's born of God sinneth not. Anybody that watches pornography is heading to hell. <clears throat> Bible says, anytime you like, have you ever parked illegally and didn't know you parked illegally? Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Bible said, be holy. As I am holy. So you're Jesus said, uh, the Bible said in 1 John 2, 6, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. Okay. 1 John 4, 17, As he is, so are we in this world. So why do we have to pray for Bible that commands that? you. That doesn't make any sense. Well, you do because that's, you never got saved. Jesus said, except you repent, that makes, that makes you will sense. all likewise perish. I'm a bit confused. When a homo repents, that's why I'm out here. That it's just a, Your false Baptist your doctrine has got you confused. Man, that's weird. Jesus said, except you repent, you will all likewise perish. So, sound like you don't know that the Bible said Job is perfect. Are you ignorant that the Bible said God said Job is perfect? Job 1.1. 1, 1. Job 1.8, Job 2.3, God said about Job, there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright. Job 1.22 says, in all this Job sin not, nor charge God foolishly. <clears throat> when a homosexual repents, he goes straight. When a drunkard repents, he goes sober. When a feminist repents, she will submit. Well, Repentance is a change of heart. Of course not. That doesn't make any sense. I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> talking about talking about a change of sex. Talking about a change of heart. Change of direction. Change of mind. Change of lifestyle. The Bible said, "Repent and turn to God and do works. Meet for repentance." What's that? Uh, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 1.21, It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Uh, it's preaching the Word of God that gets people saved. The Bible said, how shall they hear without a preacher? The Bible said, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. I just can't believe what's going on with the chief of police out here. Every, he's just spreading the word and the chief of police is out here echoing it. Every other, there's a guy who comes once a week, twice a week, and nobody else helps him. I just don't understand what's going on today. I just noticed some commotion going on today. Fallen Lord. And it's the chief of police causing all the commotion. I'm just like, what is going on? I've never seen it. I'm un it's unbelievable what's going on today at Kilgore. It's unbelievable. Un very unprofessional. Kilgore should be ashamed to have for somebody on their staff like that. There's, there's a great Bible famine on this campus. From the police officers down. Are you just going to just keep spouting? They want to know the plan of salvation. Later. No, they don't. They're not ready to get saved. Oh, so you're saying that they're not qualified for something? Mark 1 15 said, repent and believe the gospel. You're not qualified to be saved. You're still loving your sin. Wait, you're saying we're not qualified? No, because you're not ready to repent. 
You don't believe you're going to hell over your sin. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said, Fear not them which kill the body and are not able to kill the soul. Rather fear God, which is able to destroy. No, no, no. You're right. You're not smart enough to think for yourself. You are not smart enough to think for yourself. Let the officer do your thinking for you. He doesn't think you're smart enough to think for yourself. You're not smart enough to think for yourself according to the officer. He knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for you. Nobody's qualified to get saved until they believe they're going to go to hell for their sin. Thank you, sir. The Bible says in Matthew 10, 28, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Boys and girls, you better fear God, because God is holy, and God will cast you into hell for your sin, your masturbation, your pornography, your premarital sex, your rock and roll and gangster rap, your homosexuality. Forsake your sins, or you're going to go to hell. Jesus didn't die to save you in your sin. He died to save you from your sin. Matthew 1, 21. No, you don't know the Bible. Neither one, nobody out here knows the Bible, especially the authorities out here. <clears throat> Matthew 1, 21 says, Thou shalt call his name. What does it say? Since you know, what does it say? Matthew 1, 21. I'm sorry, I thought I heard a dog barking. It was you. <clears throat> Thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. Our pastor there in Miami knew that I was open air preaching. And so one day he, he came and handed me a newspaper from the, the campus that I graduated from, FIU. And it was Brother Jim Gillis on there. And he handed me the newspaper and he said, what do you think about this? And so I read it and really I didn't know what to think. <laughs> But see, after I read Jed's book, he mentioned Brother Jim in there. So I said, hey, this guy's got to be legitimate. So I went on Jim's, I went on Jim's website and I read, I read all of Jim's newsletters in one sitting. And I, I was so stirred. And I listened to an interview that Jim did with some rock and roll station right then. You've mentioned that a couple of the worst campuses you've been to are Valdosta and Georgia Southern. What are, what is the absolute worst college campus you've been on and why? Okay, the absolute worst is the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Now they have about every special interest group and radical group you can think of in the entire country. And if you would read the uh, House Committee on Unreckoned Activities and also uh, J. Edgar Hoover's writings, you'd find out that these communist front groups sent groups to Columbia University in New York. University of Wisconsin, University of Minnesota, and Berkeley, California, and University of Florida Gainesville as their big target, and they're trying to rouse up all this activity. Well, it seems like they've all gone from these other campuses up to Wisconsin, and that's where they have uh, just hung out together. And, you know, you get your feminists up there, your lesbians, your homos, blatant, you know, they take their clothes off and run around nude, and girls take their clothes off and run around nude too and they kiss and make out the lesbians and homos do right out in front of everybody and uh, that's the worst campus. So it's uh, now what is the best campus you've been on? Well, my favorite is Purdue. Why is that? Well the tech students here might not like that since they're rivals in technology. Why is that? Because they have a great place to preach it's called the mall. It's a grass, flat grass area. It's about, uh, I guess about 100 yards, about football field size. And, uh, and they sit down, and they'll sit down there all day long in the sun. And when they sit down, they're not so emotional. When they're standing up, they get kind of rowdy. And so you sit, they sit down, they'll think with you, they'll ask you questions, they'll answer your questions, and they're relevant. They're not really off the wall, perverted. There's no punk rockers up there that I know of at this time. 
And the homosexuals are like around here, tech, they're not so flagrant and out in the open, they're behind the closet. And also, uh, this is the atmosphere and the student body there. Then it would be uh, Stanford, be my second. Then uh, I guess Georgia Tech here, then the University of Virginia. So Tech here is my top five. So, uh, you know, I learned a lot from from uh, these guys like uh, Brother Jim and Brother Jed and Brother Matt. And I learned, you know, I learned a lot from being with uh, Brother Jesse Morrell on campus and watching him answer questions and control the crowd. And God is trying to help your life. That's why he sent Jesus to die for you. So why are you here? So why are you telling us that everybody's I just to did. Help? You can be saved. You turn from your sin. You forsake your sin. You trust in his blood. You can be saved. You can be washed. You can be forgiven. God loves you and I love you. I don't want you to die and go to hell. I don't want you to die in, in your sin. I want you to have the forgiveness of God. I want you to have the mercy of God. I want you to flee from the wrath of God. Turn from your sin. Be born again. Repent or you will perish. Even years before I started preaching, I, I would read from the sermon index. I, I got a hold of some sermons that were written. I remember one about sheep and wolves clothing that Jesse Morrell wrote. I, I would read things that he would write. Uh, the mentality of the church, many of the you know evangelistic programs, is that if you're being hated, if you're being opposed, you're doing something wrong, yeah. and you better modify your message yeah, to make right. it more compatible with them. There you go, seeker friendly. More seeker friendly. Yeah. But the truth is, if you're being opposed and hated, it's not a reflection that you're doing something wrong. Right. It's a reflection that you're doing something right. Come on. Because if I'm out there on a campus and I have 300 God haters in front of me who love their sin, who defend their sin, who are ultimately willing to go to hell for their sin, That's right. and they use the name of my Savior as a curse word, yeah. Yeah. if they like me and they applaud for me and they enjoy me, well then there's something wrong with me. Yes. Amen. 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 If you're accepted by a sin-loving, God-hating crowd, right. You are wrong. Yeah, that's right. Right. Yeah. And that's when you need to change your message. Amen. So you don't need to compromise and change your message or modify your approach if the world rejects you. You need to change your method or change your message if the world accepts you. If it accepts you. Yeah. Jesus said, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. you so did they of the yeah. false prophets. Amen. Well, I, I found a lot of comfort in his words, especially when when people are opposing you, whether it's family or, or even students that are involved in the collegiate ministries, one of the things that the Bible says when we're preaching to the students in Corinthians, God truly said it best. He says, he says that, that the preaching of the cross is foolishness unto those that are perishing, but unto those that are saved, it is the power of God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So hence, I believe that the that what we're doing to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor of ourselves, right here it says that it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So I, I believe that we're bringing pleasure to God, which is really what I'm here to do, is to bring pleasure to God because he's done nothing but good to me. So I truly owe him everything. And I'm saying in shame, shame, shame on the Pope. I'm saying in shame, shame, shame on the priests. I'm saying in shame, shame, shame on the bishops, shame on the Catholic cult. <clears throat> the Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 
Only one name under heaven you can be saved by. That's the name of Jesus Christ. Turn from your sins, sinners. Jesus did not say, come as you are. You know, one thing I've noticed, there's a bunch of feminine, sissy, girly men on this campus. A lot of you guys look like you're trying to look like Justin Bieber. <clears throat> walk around with your skinny pants, with your lisp, switching. <clears throat> With your spiked haircut, you'll know more about Kim Carnastian and that little Ho Miley Cyrus than you do about Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the Bible said, young man, you must be born again. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the Bible said, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Bible said, Bible said in 1 John 5, 18, Whosoever is born of God, sin it not. 1 John 3, 9, Whosoever is born of God, does not commit sin. Bible said, Awake to righteousness and sin not. Jesus said, Go and sin no more. The Bible said, My little children, I'm feeling, y'all feeling this? My little children, these things right unto you, that you sin not. Really, I got to give credit. I got to give some credit to Ray Comfort. When I, um, on our honeymoon, we went to the Holy Land. You can only do that about one day. It's a one day experience. But I went in their bookstore and I saw the book Hell's Best Kept Secret in there. And it was endorsed by one of my favorite authors, Leonard Ravenhill. So I bought that book on my honeymoon and we started reading that. And it was almost like a, it was, it was almost like something prophetic that God was going to move us into this evangelistic ministry after, you know, we're here on our honeymoon and then our marriage is going to move us into this. So I began reading that. And a friend of mine, the, the guy I started preaching with on the streets, he would always go to Bill Gothard's homeschooling convention and they'd have Ray Comfort there. So he gave me a tape by Ray Comfort called uh, using the law and evangelism and I listened to it it really wasn't anything new to me because I was I you know I'd read Finney and a lot and so but anyway he had bought a series called excellence in evangelism my friend by Ray Comfort and he was really starting to be fervent and witnessing and I God was dealing with me all this time about open air preaching on the street and finally, I asked him to let me borrow that series, Excellence in Evangelism. But I tell you, I was very reluctant about it because I knew, I knew that once I, once, once, I, once I listened to that teaching, I was going to be responsible and accountable for what I had heard. And so I knew it would drastically change my life. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. The Bible said, Jesus said, John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you'll do. You're either righteous or a sinner. You can't be both. This campus is full of little hypocritical, masturbating, movie watching, profanity using, Baptists and Catholics. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the Savior of those that obey Him. If you're committing sin, you're disobeying Him, you're not saved, He's not your Savior. Jesus said, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. You don't go to heaven because you call Jesus Lord, you go to heaven because Jesus is your Lord. If Jesus is your Lord, you do what he says. And Jesus told the hoe, Jesus told that hoe to go and sin no more. Jesus said, 
If you love me, keep my commandments. Sin is breaking God's commandments. You're a sinner, you don't love God. Bible said he that's committing sin is of the devil. That's why you sinners need to repent. <clears throat> how many here, how many here say it's okay to be a homosexual? <clears throat> You're a queer cuddler. You're a homosexual hugger. You're a sodomite sympathizer. You love what God hates. You hate what God loves. <clears throat> the Bible said, you that love the Lord hate evil. Nobody's born a sinner. You chose to commit sin. You chose to get drunk. You chose to fornicate like rabbits in a two-by-two two cage. <clears throat> you chose to masturbate. You chose to smoke pot. You chose to smoke cigarettes. You chose to listen to rock and roll. That's why you're heading to hell. <clears throat> I want you sinners to know God's mercy. I want you sinners to know God's forgiveness is always conditional. God's forgiveness is never unconditional. It's always conditional. The Bible said, He that covers his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsakes them shall have mercy. To have mercy on your soul, you must not only confess your sin, you must forsake your sin. <clears throat> this young man smokes. This young man cusses. And this man is having premarital sex. <clears throat> you know, the, the more people that get, more people get saved, the more people stop sinning. <laughs> more people stop sinning, the better society will be. The less, the less judgment comes on society. And so I want to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. You know why you students watch porn, masturbate, fornicate like rabbits in a two-by-two two cage and have butt sex? You know why? <clears throat> not because of your genetics, not because of your testosterone, your estrogen, or your DNA. I'll tell you why. Here's what Jesus said. <clears throat> Jesus said, for from within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. The reason is, your heart's wicked. Your heart's wicked. You got a wicked, selfish heart. Reason why you sin, you're selfish. The reason you're heading to hell. It's because you're selfish. The reason why you're not like Brother Micah is because you're selfish. The reason why you're not a Christian is because you're selfish. <clears throat> the reason you're a lesbian is you're selfish. The reason you're a whoremonger is because you're selfish. The reason why you're a masturbator is because you're selfish. Hey, if everybody liked Jesus' message, if everybody liked Jesus' message, why'd they nail Jesus to the cross? Jesus said in John 15, 25, they hated me without a cause. Jesus said, the world cannot hate you, but me it hates because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Jesus said the world hated him, why? He told the world their works, their deeds, their lifestyle, their action was evil. Same thing I'm telling you perverts. Same thing I'm telling you sinners. The Bible said the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You don't want the truth about God. You want to smoke cigarettes. You want to smoke pot. You want to get drunk. You want to fornicate like rabbits.
You want to listen to rock and roll and gangster rap. You want to go to tailgate parties. You want to go to frat parties. You want to go to sorority girls parties. <clears throat> you serpents. You generation of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Jesus said, Matthew 25, 41, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. More should count the cost and, and join the fight. Join the fight, you know, to, to bring the light, to bring, to bring the glorious gospel to people that are sitting in darkness, people that are bound, bound by their rebellion, their iniquities. Of course, we know that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but he also is roaming around, seeing whom he could, he could, he, he could devour as a roaring lion. So I think that um, more of us should, should endeavor to, to count the costs and join the fight. I am, I, am, I am encouraged with, especially being on Facebook, you see it, all, uh, all these people that God is raising up uh, with a burden and a desire to open air preach, you know, all over the country, uh, young people God's raising up. I'm praying, I'm praying that, I'm praying that God will convert, I'm praying that God will convert homosexuals and raise them up as open air preachers. I'm praying that God will convert Muslims and raise them up as open air preachers. I'm praying that God will convert Jews and raise them up as open air preachers. You know, I'm praying that I'm praying that God will raise up uh, all these people. One one prayer I've always found that seemed like God honored is uh, Matthew 9:37 and 38. Jesus said, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he send forth labors in the harvest. I've always found that God honors that prayer. And uh, so I, I appreciate Brother Jesse. It seemed like, it seemed like Brother Jesse's always uh, been in it, not for himself, but, but to raise up laborers and for uh, the cause of the kingdom of God. And so if, 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 you know, if, we, if we've got that heart and we pray that way, God will answer that prayer and honor that prayer. I'll tell you this. You know what a false prophet tells you? Here's what a false prophet tells you. He says, it's okay. God understands. We're all sinners. You can't help it. God will forgive you no matter what. Go ahead and smoke that joint. It's okay. God understands. We're all sinners. You can't help it. God loves you. He'll forgive you. Go ahead and masturbate. <clears throat> it's okay. God understands. God loves you. He'll forgive you. You can't stop sinning. Go ahead and watch pornography. <clears throat> Go ahead and have butt sex. But I'll tell you what a real preacher tells you. A real preacher tells you, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. A real preacher said the wages of sin is death. A real preacher says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The Bible said, be holy as I am holy. You're committing sin, you're not living holy. How much? If you're masturbating, you're not living holy. You use profanity, you're not living holy. You listen to rock and roll and gangster rap, you're not living holy. Young man, everything you do is wicked. You're a sinner. You're not living for God. The Bible said, the plowing of the wicked is sin. I want you to know if you're a sinner, you're living in daily, hourly, moment by moment, rebellion against the holy God. Hebrews 5, 9 said, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation 
unto all them that obey him. Jesus Christ is the Savior of those that obey him. You're sinning, you're disobeying him, he's not your Savior, and you're not saved, hypocrite. Bible said, <clears throat> no, he said in John 7, 24, judge righteous judgment. Bible said, he that's spiritual judges all things. Bible said in righteousness, you shall judge your neighbor. Bible said, know ye not that the saints shall judge the world. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. How do you know the fruit of a tree without making a judgment? Jesus said, beware of false prophets. How do you know a false prophet if you don't judge? Hey, hey, I thought you said you weren't supposed to judge. I keep saying you're supposed to judge. How do you know a false prophet without judging? No, it's going over your head. The Bible said in Proverbs 28, 5, the Bible said evil men understand not judgment. You students don't understand judgment because you're evil. Hey, you say we're not supposed to judge? No, 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 I don't high five masturbators. <clears throat> hey, if you say, young lady, since we're not supposed to judge, uh, is a rapist a bad person? Yes or no? Oh, no, no, no. No judging. No judge. Don't judge. Hey, is a pedophile a bad person? Yes or no? Uh, how about is a rapist a bad, is a racist a bad person? Yes or no? You. Is a racist a bad person? Yes or no? Uh, so you're okay with somebody being a racist? Yeah, yeah, that's a smart move. Because you'd show, you'd be shown to be a hypocrite who doesn't know what they're talking about. <clears throat> the, by, hey, hey, you just called me a hypocrite, so I thought you said we weren't supposed to judge. <clears throat> but Jesus called people hypocrites. Bible said, Paul reasoned of Felix concerning faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. I'm out here reasoning with you sinners about righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. You know, follow Jesus Christ, you must deny yourself. That means stop your sinning. I believe the most, I believe open air preaching is so important to get out and preach the word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And by, by grace are you saved through faith. Nobody gets saved without faith and faith only comes by hearing the word of God. And uh, uh, Romans 10, 14 says, how should they hear without a preacher? In Titus 1, 3, God has in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. First, this, First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1:21. for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. As important as preaching is, I believe an even more important ministry, and an even more neglected ministry, is the ministry of intercessory prayer. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 59, 16, he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Isaiah 64, 7, God says, there is none that calls upon thy name that stirs up himself to take hold of thee. Ezekiel 22, 30 and 31, God said, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. And it almost indicates there that if he could have found one man that would have stood in the gap and interceded, you know, to me, to make up the hedge. Make up the hedge, to me, it means, it means most people are not doing what they ought to be doing. When you make up the hedge, you make the difference. You make up the difference that other people should be doing and are not doing. You put in extra time. You go the extra mile to make up the difference. You, you know, maybe not... 
Maybe a lot of people can't preach, but I tell you, everybody can pray. Everybody can pray. Everybody can uh, meet the conditions and qualify themselves to be an intercessor. Revelation 3.19, Jesus said, As many as I love, you can chase Be zealous, therefore. The way Jesus shows his love for hellbound hypocrites is rebuking them in their sin and urging them to repent. 